Welcome everyone. Uh, the first Q, live Q&A for the year. Uh, so the plan is we're going to spend about 40 minutes going through the questions that are left on the forum. Then we've got a few, a few quick announcements. And then after that, I'll open the audio chat up to a, just a complete free for all. Uh, obviously, we'll be keeping a, an eye on the Sunday live Q&A. We'll open it up to a live uh, free for all. Uh, after that, you can do whatever you want, ask questions that haven't been asked or anything like that. So, yeah. Dan, shall we uh, kick it off? Yeah. Yeah, let's do this. Right, I'm just going to go on um, chronological order with these. So just bear with me as I kind of translate these. Some of these are like a mile long. So, right, so the first one's from Crazy Henry. Uh, where do you see SafeX in six months? Oh, I see that the marketplace is launched and we have some merchants selling stuff. and. Um, we're trading on a lot more exchanges. We have a lot more hash power. And uh, we have a worldwide movement taking hold. That would put us like towards the end of the summer, like August or something like that, right? All right. So the next one's from Jerry. How far is the development of the marketplace? Absolutely. So this is really great. So let me give you guys a little bit of insight in how we're going about building this thing some documentation and then we um, develop stuff related to that documentation like locking in tokens putting up sell offers making accounts so we documented this stuff then we started thinking how to build it so so we start to build in the phases of proofs of concept so for example we have the um the the thing called uh you know locking in tokens okay fine second thing is making an account out of locked in tokens fine then the other thing is making uh uh ma making a sell offer great the other thing is bro feedback are being developed individual as individual parts and as soon as they are secure stood and documented we combine them all into a monolithic structure so we're right in there building these proofs of concepts so that should be clear we we've um, we've added players to our development team so we're now like four low level uh, programmers plus me who are building the marketplace and notably somebody who I worked with for three years now. So he came on board in December and he kind of kicked in gear in January after holidays and it's progressing wildly. You can see there's a Golang um, repository. Basically, like we're in this proof of concept phase. You'll start to see maybe in a month or so maybe in six weeks, you'll start to see these proofs of concepts. You, we can click on them, test them out on the test net and stuff like that. So this is the process we're going through. This stuff, once it's built and released, you don't want to die once you released it. So it needs to be perfect the first time. Complexity down, keep flexibility as high as possible so that we can add and, and improve features. So you know, this is the insight in how the development process is going. There's, it's like from documentation to proof of concept, the individual components, and then we'll combine them all and have the marketplace that we keep, uh, that we imagine. So that's that. Awesome. All right, next question. Uh, it's related to your recent trips to San Fran. Uh, so will San Francisco be the second headquarters for SafeX? And if so, what will be the function of it? Yeah, so uh, I, didn't, I, I went to the US in 2017 in the summer for like five days. Siloed, I only met with uh, one party and it was um, not a fruitful uh, meeting. But on this occasion, I visited uh, New York City, Washington DC and, and San Francisco, of course. Um, when when uh, cryptocurrencies three years ago or so, so cryptocurrencies were totally gray area. Like um, no one knows what's going to happen. Companies that had boatloads of money could afford to stay in 
in in San Francisco and still navigate like legal stuff and you know even if the even if the legal process doesn't reach you of of processing legal process is um is is something that costs a lot of money so raising only 50 grand i definitely couldn't risk just sitting around you know wondering what's going to happen in the us so naturally i just went you know kind of nomad and things got more clear or i developed better you know and and found my foothold and got some better support today the environment in the us is more is more um it's more you know uh, the legal 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 people legal professionals what's going on with these cryptos they see the difference between icos and what we have which is a collective nine percent of of the token in 2015 thousand dollars for that whatever whatever it is that i'm doing from the free will of myself there's like none of you when you buy your tokens are buying them for me you're buying them from the people who bought them first in that 99 percent. so we're like a charter we're a collective of people so we're a community so when you're buying the token you're not investing in me i never see that money the only money I've ever seen was the fifty thousand dollars in Bitcoin that I received three years ago. So that being said, um, SafeX is some totally different animal than what has happened in two thousand seventeen and two thousand eighteen with the ICOs. The, for the legal system to observe Safe, uh, SafeX versus the other things, and today we can bear that cost. And today the legal system understands. Aha, uh -huh, there's a token that is a community and there's a token that someone sold half of it and kept half and people are depending on this this entity these group of people who still have half their token to to perform something and as a result they'll get a benefit we never started that way we we did the bare minimums we wanted to build a small application see where this is going to go just just be as minimalistic as possible and and uh, we collectively act with each other. We're more like a clubhouse than anything else. So, and I hope everyone understands that pretty clearly. And it's been working out really well because um, we're more flexible. We we can come up with different ideas much more better than let's say this is how it must be because we launched our company this way. We have a finite amount of money, and they're like. I poured in way more into the project than what I ever started with. You see, so when when you make a company and you sell shares, you never do that. You go and raise more money or do all kind of stuff, and you don't really get any help from the community. You you are dependent only on yourself. So I don't feel that way. Um, so San Francisco. So that's why I wasn't there. And when I went back, realizing the environment has totally changed. Now we we are making plans on how to enter the U.S. market, and that will take a few months. Uh, not a few months; it'll take half a year or so. That's what I'm estimating. A few months to do some of the the um, processes that we must in order to reliably enter the USA in a in a safe manner. But um, yeah, we definitely will be very present in in America, and um, that's in progress. I mean, that's a really exciting part of everything. So. Um, I think I think, yeah. You, you, I'm I'm actually starting to count on on us being very very much uh, active in in the United States of America. Great. Okay. So the next one, Tom Dillon, uh, marketing strategy outline. Your overall game plan for finding clients and customers for SafeX, and details on how you will achieve those goals. Yes. So. Um, Cryptocurrency, super hard, super hard thing to talk about. Um, there's not a lot of people out there with the right experience in order to uh, promote the, you know, a cryptocurrency, so to speak. Just in general, because it's a totally different kind of product. The, so there is a strategy. I mean, there's a, um, I have a methodology. If you've seen those, um, 
I sold three of uh, off of not not on. I, I didn't, you know, people reached out to me and, and demanded them from me. So. So we're about merchandising, like what brought what attracted me to cryptocurrency was the ability to buy something from anywhere in the world. Right. So. It's all about so um, just consider consider the brands out there that you see. Just consider for a second that the real opportunity on SafeX is not necessarily buying tokens and 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 the currency. It's it's in merchandising. It's in making things and selling it. And as you buy wholesale, you sell for retail. That's pretty clear, right? I mean, not everybody understands that, but that's that's a fact. You buy wholesale or you produce wholesale, and you sell. And so that's pretty much our target market. It's the retailers and and um, strategy is in that direction. So I have a few uh, products in mind that I'm not going to disclose right now, but um, we will set a good example for what kind of retailing you could do. And um, if you consider maybe today there's maybe 20 million people who hold cryptocurrencies or, or more or less, maybe maybe less by now. People, maybe maybe 100 million or 200 million people in the world have heard about the cryptocurrency. They read at least two or three pages about cryptocurrency. And those are big generalizations. You can challenge me on those numbers, but I think that they're in a good range. So you have like 8 billion people in the world and you have a block of 200 million people who heard about cryptocurrency. Many of them are interested in a marketplace platform for selling goods and services because a lot of people are merchants and probably a bunch of people who are listening right now, you're selling stuff on Amazon or you're affiliate marketing Amazon stuff or you're auctioning things on eBay, things like that. So now imagine you now have a less friction currency. So we're not talking a credit card. Like as a Serbian, I can never buy anything from anywhere, and I'm not exaggerating. The other day, I tried to buy some some stuff from Newegg using Serbian debit card, and I can't because it's in Serbia, and I could only buy things if I use an American card and then get things shipped to America. So you see, I would never have that problem if I just paid in Bitcoin. Did, and um, SafeX and Bitcoin is. On SafeX, we have a structured marketplace. We have reputation. When you buy something on the SafeX marketplace, you have a receipt for it. You have kind of due process. And uh, and on Bitcoin, we just kind of send emails. We agree, and we don't really know if if the payment really ever got to you or not because say it's gone, or and you could just lie and say that the product never got there. So there's kind of no accountability when you're doing a Bitcoin marketplace. Always depending on like BitPay or, you know, um, the only big one out there, I guess like Purse.io, you know, that middleman between Amazon and stuff. But anyway, you don't have anything that's direct cryptocurrency to products. So the marketing strategy is to reach those people who are literally buying and selling stuff every day and uh, who want to reach bigger markets. So you have... Places like Serbia is most of the world. You have 100, 100 countries or more that have problems getting product. Most of Europe has problems getting product. The only places that I've that it's really easy to get product is like China and in, uh, in America. When I want to buy some keyboard, even if I'm in Switzerland, it's still not, it's still not super reliable where, how to get this thing. People have really poor designed websites, really bad design checkout systems and stuff like that. So cryptocurrency, I think, is the lowest friction way to buy stuff on the internet. So that's exactly why um, it's like I, I was trying to pay for uh, legal legal stuff with, uh, and it's like, dude, we can settle right now. We agreed we want to work together, so let me just send the payment immediately. And it's like, oh, no, 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 because we must do a wire transfer because of, you know. You see, these are the kind of things that cryptocurrency changes. They make things immediate. They make they make the, the world go round much faster than we do with the traditional banking. So that's the kind of marketing we'll be doing is 
showing people the advantages that cryptocurrencies have. And I know that in lately, I haven't been going into these kind of gears that that um that I truly feel all the time and what brought me here and what probably brought many people as well into the cryptocurrency space. But if you if you were following me in 2014 and 2015, there's almost nothing else I was talking about except this. Outsourcing uh, software development into San Francisco using Bitcoin. Just a champion of using Bitcoin to buy stuff and paying services. So deep under the hood for now, when it's wrapping up and it's completing up, you'll be seeing a lot more and a lot more of that going on where we're showing people exactly, I mean, literally taking their hand and walking them through how cryptocurrency changes their life and increases their business because of lower friction. They buying and selling of goods and services. So that's that. Um, yeah, we're, we're talking with, a, with um, teams. Uh, we got to get really serious about it. And we're having some really serious conversations with some some strong players who have cryptocurrency experience. But we, we've yet to see because this is something new what we've done. Not many other people have done it before. And it's a little bit of a challenge when you're just taking someone for a... No, it's not McAfee, man. It's a... <laughs> it's a we'll have a, a quite structured approach to marketing um, in, in the future. So... So it, it's something definitely, definitely ready to consider for now. Like it, right now, while we're, we're, we're like very close to getting the marketplace up and running. So yeah, I hope that, hope that more than answers the question. Yeah. I mean, marketing for uh, cryptocurrency projects is, <clears throat> it gets a little bit awkward because your traditional go-to routes, like your, um, your AdWords, Facebook, and all that kind of stuff, is um, banned. So they, yeah, they yeah. won't even allow you to touch that. So your, your traditional avenues, um, you can't even touch. So it is quite a, it's a bit of a curveball, really, when you want into it. it it's, it's something that needs as much attention as the development has right now. So. Yeah. Right, okay, so next question. Uh, I've lost my place, one second. Uh, so this is relating to, and there's a, there's a few questions relating to the mining farm, so I'm going to kind of band them together because uh, they're all very similar. Uh, so when will the mining farm slash farms be operational and will it can coincide with being able to purchase cards? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so while, while I was in, in the U.S., learned about a few different uh, fundraising methods that are that exist that are that have been passed by by the regulation recently and so I want to employ that to a mining farm in the US and the reason is because when I started buying these uh, machines over here in in Serbia which I winded up buying about a hundred gravit cards like twice as much as I would in the US and that's because in order to bring the graphic cards into Serbia, you have to pay a 20% tax and then a 10% customs on top of that 20% you know, upgraded tax. On top of that, you pay a premium plus the shipping plus everything. It winds up being almost more than double. Like just to give you an example, uh, you could buy 470, 470s, RX 470s for 160 euros in, in Serbia uh, and in the U.S., brand new ones, you could get them for like ninety dollars. So it's more it's more than double to buy them in in uh, in Serbia. Learned a, a kind of hard lesson. I lost a little bit of money um, in trying to build out the mining farm in Serbia, and it just turns out that it's not the optimal idea because we need bank for our buck. We need as much hash power for every dollar spent as possible. We. Um, we have plenty of options in the U.S. And when I was in Washington D.C., I met with somebody who, who uh, I know for quite a while, who's mining for the last five years. And pretty much everything is doable in the U.S. So we're kind of just uh, sorting out logistics. So instead of like buying used gear or finding stuff here and there, we're gonna buy it all up in bulk, and uh, and we'll see we'll see how to distribute it after that. So 
probably a couple months or a few months before before that's kind of like kicking in gear in full. So definitely something that's uh, that's being worked on. It's something that exists. Very important for our community to have the secure network. So yeah, hope that find, finds you well. Hope that news finds you well. A U.S. mining farm. Yes, that's pretty much our entry into the U.S. Great stuff. And that, that comment about secure network, there's another question about that later. So we'll, we'll cover that point in a minute. Uh, so the next one's from our very own Eddie. Uh, so it's quite a long one. So let me just quickly paraphrase it. So he's saying that there's a clear and logical path for um, releasing the initial release. So the alpha, beta, release candidate, etc., of the marketplace system. But after that, Will you be having a consistent and continuous uh, release plan so that there isn't too much dead time between phases? Between the marketplace release? Yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah, hang on, let me just uh, review this again. Yeah, so there's different stages of the actual release. So we've got alpha, beta release and all that kind of stuff, but then oh. also considering after as well. Will you be having a consistent and regular release uh, phases throughout while well, the entire lifetime of the project so that there isn't sort of a lot of dead time between these uh, different stages? Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, we're starting off with something simple and obviously experience grows as, uh, as, we, as we complete tasks. And so as experience grows, ideas become more complex. So there will always be updates. There will always be improvements to the software as we go. Like even now we're finding optimizations to the Monero code that we forked. And so it's, it's also not a completed thing. Like block times are two minutes, but it's because of a lot of bottlenecks in the code. So there's, there's always going to be something that we're doing. So the more money we're going to make, the more, the more, uh, the more developers we'll be able to hire and the more optimizations we'll be able to add and the more features we'll be able to add. So the marketplace is being structured in this kind of meta layer. So that meta layer will have these like templates attached to it. And more developers we have or more time they have, more templates we can add. So let's say you wanted some real estate auction or you wanted real estate sold for a fixed price or you wanted a um, you wanted a, a inheritance lockup. You know, those are things that, that developers can always code. Like we'll probably need some kind of like poll from the community in order to determine what are the features people desperately want now. So we'll constantly need to keep our ear to the ground, be listening to what people are doing, where the trends are going, and then develop and reinforce those trends and help people get the business done that they're trying to do. That's our objective. So I, I hope that that is kind of clear. I hope that is. Yeah. yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Right, next one, Duck Club. Um, what's the status of the SafeX Experty partnership that was announced quite a while back? Are they still considering using the SafeX blockchain? Yeah, absolutely. So we still have an open dialogue, although considering the, the development that we're at, that took, a, you know, it's been a year since, since we announced that partnership, since we discussed that we would be able to do that. So those are the kind of features that we would want to have. So there's their their features are about being able to to sell their time over a, over a blockchain right so literally that's something that we would be able to tap into and um although we would still need to program those features and that's not on our roadmap for right away eventually it'll come around right cool next one from our uh, aussie aussie sloth uh who's recently been appointed as uh, one of our mods as well today um, what is the minimum hash rate do you feel must be achieved so you're comfortable launching the marketplace? Yeah, so I'm, I, I want to I achieve uh, like 10, 15 mega hash. I want for by next year, 20 mega hash. So my estimates that that's like uh, four or five million dollars of mining of equipment. So that, that's, that's the goal. It's to have 20 mega hash by next year. Awesome. By, by next year, meaning like September 2020, 2019. So like uh, 10 months from now. Over the next 10 months, we should onboard, um, have 20 mega hash steady. Great. Cool. 
Next one. <laughs> uh, uh, when is the marketplace getting released? As soon as possible. What happened to the what happened to the safe exchange coin vote on coin deal? Right when we were about to win, they removed it without any explanation. Yeah, so from the from the from the get go, from the the very moment that we were we started the voting with the safex token, safex cash, I I uh, I right away said, you know, there's no reason to have the safe exchange coin there, and it just kind of like didn't get removed. But then I got a text message saying, hey man, do you want to have the um, do you want to have Safe Exchange Coin still listed? And I said no. And that was the end of that. Simple as that. Well, just to kind of like, just to not leave it hanging, and is the old thing. Do we really want to be educating people how to use the old token and the new ones and explain all this stuff all around? Honestly, I, I don't want to do that. I want to just move on to our new world. Yeah, it's, it's, com it's complicated enough. Uh, for absolute new beginners uh, without adding two different blockchains in there and migration and everything. So How are we going to onboard the next 20 million people onto the marketplace, educating them about how there used to be this old token and stuff like that? It's totally pointless. I mean, we're talking, we're talking short-term gains, you know, but maybe short-term gains in exchange for, like, uh, you know, tons of confusion and and on top of that tons and tons of work on us to have to pitch this in all these different angles and explain people why there's this bitcoin wallet there with the safe exchange coin and there's a safex token and what is all this about so so complicated let's keep it simple let's let's just leave the safe exchange coin out of it right yeah makes sense uh do you still think the marketplace will release release uh start again do you think this marketplace will re still reach 500 million in 2019 i think that's uh i don't think that was the ever the statement i think it was within a yeah, certain then, time period from the launch yeah, wasn't the, it? Not on a specific time. 100 million dollars should be reached so the ambition is 500 million dollars mm -hmm. of merchandising value going across our marketplace within six months mm -hmm. of the live marketplace and yeah, I, I, I'm still confident yeah, I'm, I'm committed to to pursue that goal. Yes. Okay. Have you ever thought about implementing a credit card slash debit card third party payment system where your payments converted directly to SafeX and your purchases and goods serve seem that, that would defeat the purpose. The Black Friday and Christmas shopping promotion, is that set for 2019 or 2020? Every year. Will you be able to post a brief weekly development progress update to this forum until the marketplace is released? We've actually got a little bit of news about that, so yeah. we'll, uh, we'll bring that out. All right. The answer is yes. Uh, probably a question a few people are asking about, and I know you've already tapped on a little bit in terms of getting the marketplace perfect. Um, but obviously, over the over the years, different dates have been given for when we like to get the marketplace released. So, why are there so many delays, or why why is the marketplace getting delayed so much? Yeah, so we we need to make a a great piece of software. So. December, we added two new developers. And so just rush in and build something that just works. Of course we can. Of course we can. But I don't want to. Like, it's kind of like when we did the migration wallet. Uh, I had it ready in September 28th. Found it in November 8th is because I spent that whole month and fixing it and making it better for you to use so it's the same thing with a marketplace like if you've seen the documentation from the summer and what it looks like now oh my god so like yeah for sure i want to keep going in this style because only get better over time until they're gone so while they're still here let's keep making it like the best it can be before it goes live um 
yeah, that that's just my approach. If anybody has a better idea how to uh, turn sooner and whatever, then be my guest and take over. But we're on a roll. We're on a path that's going to be successful. So I'm not so worried about it in a bad sense. I'm worried about it in getting it done, but not that it's not going to be done. A while back, there was a discussion about a white paper specifically about the marketplace. Can we expect the when can we expect the release of a SafeX marketplace white paper? Exactly. So, uh, literally on Thursday night, the agreement of collaboration from very high profile, in, uh, like genius individual, who will help us with a lot of stuff. He crossed our T's and dotted our I's because sometimes. When we talk about things like reputation systems, it's like a uh, thing from somebody and you weren't happy with it and you want to leave a feedback. You want other people to know, like, how are you going to leave? Should your feedback be anonymous? Should your feedback be tied to your account name or it should be anonymous? That's a huge question. Honestly, I don't know the best way to do it, but this man does. You see? So, we're starting our collaboration. So as soon as um, as soon as we're like to, like, I be I don't want to embarrass myself. So as soon as like this is like perfect, we will publish that document. And and we've got like literally the best person to help us referee that document. And um, see, they will they will write about it. You will see. This next question kind of also kind of delves into your recent shift into Golang as well. Um, but we can go into the Golang. I think there's a Golang question a little bit further down. But um, it's about a mobile app for the marketplace. Yep. Um, there's been a bit of an on and off discussion about it. So uh, can you Absolutely. go through that? So, so listen, that? listen. You got the reason you got McAfee Miner with a wallet inside. Is because we 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 built out the C plus plus library for the wallet. See, when you don't have anything else, it's just the C plus plus SafeX wallet plus the to put together. But the C plus plus wallet mobile phone is nearly impossible. Um, or the challenge is, is as big or bigger than just rewriting everything for the wallet <clears throat> in Golang. When we rewrite everything in Golang, everybody who writes in Golang can join in, and it's way more fun. It's much easier, and it's much more productive. It's kind of like, ta it's like taking a step back to get two steps forward in, a, in return purpose of Golang. And so uh, when we complete our Golang module sometime in this month, then we can get a full wallet done much faster. Never gotten it done in C++. Yeah, I had a I'd play with the Golang um, this morning, actually. Uh, so someone who's coming from a completely different angle. Uh, There's a lot of documentation, so I'd encourage anyone who's interested in programming just to have a look at Golang and have a play with it and, and, and just do a few basic tutorials just to get your head around it because it's, uh, it's an interesting language and it's, it's, it's quite straightforward to learn. So, yeah, anyone, uh, jump on Golang, have a play with it. Yeah, way easier code to follow than C++. So faster, much more stuff can be done by more people. Yeah, so this the same question, it kind of, there's a kind of a secondary question embedded into it. So uh, developing mobile apps, uh, have you got any plans to hire a mobile app developer? Yes, yes, we actually interviewed a couple of mobile app developers uh, during this week, actually. They're very actively pursuing the mobile side of stuff. Absolutely, for sure, 100%. 
how will SafeX simplify the usage of SafeX cache for mass adoption? So how will we simplify the usage for mass adoption? Uh, by learning from, from you guys. That's why we're so fortunate to have an com uh, early adopter community who can give us our feedback, can, can give us the feedback necessary in order to uh, learn what will make this uh, mass adoptable. So even reaching a million people isn't you can't consider that mass adoption. What we want to reach is 20 million, 100 million users. You see, that's mass adoption. Um, 100,000 so million. Yeah, it's the learning process. First 100K to 1 million users is the learning process. And then to 100 million people because we figured it all out. Right, next question's from Kiyoshi, or Kiyoshi, however you want to say it. Uh, so several months, months ago, you mentioned three countries as a focus, India, Poland, and Serbia. Yet we've not really heard much about it since then. Can you give any specific examples of actions taken in these countries over the last few, few months yes. or discussion? So we, we have uh, the, the exchange coin deal is in Poland. They shot... To into, into the Polish community, and um, we were discussing with a a uh, an exchange that's in in India that we just haven't closed the deal yet. Right now we've just finished the uh, documentation on integrating SafeX deposits into an exchange, so we could talk about that. But basically, we'll do some community initiative to raise some funds to. Uh, get listed on those exchanges that we've been talking to. Now that we have this document that helps us get a list, it helps those exchanges list our coin. Good stuff. Right, so the next one's more of a technical one. Uh, so it depends how far we are with this. So uh, how will the marketplace handle the storage of data, so image files and all that kind of data? I think there was a discussion of a side chain or something like that, but I think that since then it's we've moved on to a different idea. So have you got any insight into that yet? Absolutely. The links, links to images will store on chain. This will store off chain. So you could either store them on a website, you could store them on IPFS. It's basically hot swappable. You basically just provide your link to where is the images. So we won't store those images on chain. Hello. Oh, yeah. So I'm just uh, I'm just trying to make sense of this next question. Next question. Got it. I think I think we've already covered it. Um, what happened to marketing when we've we've covered that yeah, anyway? We talked about marketing uh, and getting SafeX on exchanges. So I think that's a little bit more of a covered question anyway. Again, so these are all exchange-based questions which we've already covered. So the next one's from Ismo. Uh, will the marketplace be interoperable with any other blockchains? Um, yeah, perhaps, um, you know, there's things like Cosmos, there's things like Blocknet. So, yeah, that's a lot of work that needs to be done, and we're just not focusing on that right now. But interoperability is totally something that's possible, and it's out there. Yeah, we have People a, are doing it. Potential for... um, this next one's just got a link, so let me just double-check what the link's about. Ah, so this is one of your developer updates a while. Um, so about 14 months ago, there were some marketing initiatives. I think you were doing some background guerrilla marketing with a company a while back, about 14 months ago. Uh, have they been abandoned? Yes. Uh, th like I said, this was, um, you know, we try a lot of different, you know, companies and stuff like that. This is really, really hard stuff to... Uh, understand so yeah this is just not for everybody right yes like just because you're a good PR company in whatever that you've done before doesn't mean crypto is going to be your forte this time I think that's understandable I don't think that needs explanation exactly that yeah 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 as we said before the the traditional avenues of marketing that that you know, a lot of companies would use aren't really at our luxury here. 
combine that with relatively new technology and, and, and any new way of thinking, trying to simplify that down, you've just got to do a bit of trial and error with these different PR companies. Um, not all of them are going to be really clued up. Yeah, and that, you know, honestly, we're just going to focus on on who's done it before. That's pretty much, that's it. Just money and it's just who's done it before. That's it. Plus, I think we're pretty good. We're pretty good on our own so far, anyway, right? We're not that bad, or we haven't been so bad. There's anybody listening right now? I think you found out about SafeX somehow, right? Yep. Yeah. If SafeX, uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, if SafeX cash is meant to be stable because of the innovation, innovative emission curve, then why do you expect the, ca the price of SafeX cash to increase? Shouldn't say. I stable? don't know. I don't know what the price will be. However, uh, I think people misunderstand what is stable. So, like exponential and linear are kind of pumping and dumping is not stable. Rising stably rises up in a stable way. It doesn't just fly up like a rocket, unstable, right? So like, I have no idea, but the, the point is that sell stuff, that should kind of oscillate the price, go spike up and then spike down every second year, if you know what I mean. Yes, you distribute money, the less concentrated it is, or the less concentrated it should be. The more smooth you emit money, the less chance of it just collapsing spontaneously. So I think people are confused with what they think is a stable coin, like a, a tether, which is absolutely not stable. The dollar fluctuates versus the euro versus the yen, versus the Bitcoin every single day. It's not stable at all. This is a, 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 a USD tether is equal to a USD tether. So obviously a SafeX will always be equal to a SafeX. The point is that instead of having wild pumps and wild dumps, that's what we're trying to combat with our emission curve. That answers that and clears that up for good. Of course. Um, so the next question is about the V8 wallet, but I think we've already tapped on that a little bit. Um, uh, Jumpin, I don't think we talked about the V8 wallet actually. Oh no, that was before the, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there was talks about the V8 wallet that never happened. Uh, what, what was that supposed to be and why did it get canceled? So I think yeah, the V8 wallet is not canceled. It's just that I, so I, I did mention one really important component. The, the C++ wallet is easy to the, um, the McAfee miner, for example, or the SafeX, SafeX miner. But to add the C++ wallet to the V7 wallet is, it's kind of spaghetti because in the V7 wallet, when you do migrations, you can have many different keys. Every key, you need to rescan the blockchain and stuff like that. You need to, the, the, it's very rigid how the C++ wallet is built, plain and simple. I don't want to use the C++ wallet in the V7 wallet. It's just a lot of debt for the future. So you, you, you have the, the McAfee miner, you have the wallet in there. Okay, you have to export your keys, etc. Honestly, it saves me like three or four months of brain damage from having to program over and over again this thing as soon as the Golang version is finished. Because as soon as Golang version, I, I just pop in this one small library and all your keys pass through that library and I can manage everything from one place. Instead of having to like try to finagle this to work, work. But seriously, there's a lot of stuff to do. And I don't think that it's a massive priority to have, you know, V8 wallet out yet when we're still developing the Golang library, which is due this month. So give it some time. It'll be great. It'll be great. And, and I think 
I think if we had more frequent updates, people like all of you would understand what's really going on without having to wait a few months to have this kind of conversations. Um, I appreciate yeah. your patience. And, um, but I hope that answer clears that up and, and it's understood that trying to be as effective as possible and, and with time and, and uh, with energy. So, yeah, so yeah. just so I've got it, I've got it in my head as well, just so I can simplify it for my own explanation. You've obviously, obviously, we're doing the the shift over to the GoLang uh, version of the blockchain um, software. No, not the blockchain, just uh, the just the stuff, the stuff to manage it. Yeah, yeah, the daemons and all that. Um, <clears throat> but you'll also have to maintain the C plus plus version as well if you wanted to, if you wanted to do the V eight wallet now. Is that what, what we're kind of saying? Whereas in reality, we're already shifting to Golang, so we might as well just wait a little bit longer and just release the wallet. Yeah, C++ is still something we're using. that That's not going away. But for managing keys and managing payments and stuff like that, we're going into a more lightweight environment. So, Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Right, so the next one's about uh, coin market cap and all of those different coin market cap type websites. So uh, it was never clear to this guy about why Cephex states was never uh, correct on coin market cap. Uh, and yeah, it's, be not, it's out of our control. It's, it's coin market cap has control of that. And I'm not, I don't really want to talk about it because it's not, it's not something I can control. So I don't even know who to talk to. So is it, you know, you could you could request form all you want. You guys have been doing it. I've been doing it. Yeah, I think I think we've all I mean, submitted a request form. And yeah, it's totally totally manipulated. So who cares? We you know we're at their mercy a little bit. The next one, I think this is quite specific. Uh, will there be a marketing campaign on Instagram? Uh, they have a billion users and e-commerce platforms like Wish reaches one billion of trade volume just with ads on Instagram. So is that exactly? So you see, the people who will find place better for their business, those people already know how to do those things, and they'll market their products they'll market their products through the SafeX platform. Like, uh, there's already people successfully merchandising. Platform that gets them more money at the end of the day, they will do their methods for merchandising, and under the hood is the SafeX marketplace instead of eBay or Amazon or Wishybone or whatever the hell. You see what I mean? This is the game plan. But of course, it's, you know, we got to work smart. So this kind of question has been asked a few times in, in different ways, uh, but I thought it might be worth just circling back uh, for emphasis. Uh, let me just read this. So why is it impossible or why is the hesitation to get listed on exchanges for the new coin? Uh, so when when we reach when we reached out to a bunch of exchanges, they um, they always ask for the integration document. Never had that until the last in the past two weeks. We were working on that integration document, so we've distilled it three times. A SafeX GitHub SafeX Wiki, so you can you can go check it out. It's literally there. It, it needs just a, a little bit more formatting work. And literally by tonight or tomorrow morning, I'm going to open it up for some people can donate some Bitcoin and guarantee that we're going to get listed on more exchanges over the next month. Basically, this document plus some coin means we'll get on all those other exchanges that we already opened up a dialogue with. So I'll introduce everybody to our man, our business development man. He's, he's amazing. He's amazing. I love that guy. Because he does what I can't do. He's persistent. He's like relationship guy. He's so polite. He's so he's a real deal. He's the man you need on your team. He's the one who contacted over 40 exchanges, has their information, knows who to talk to. 
when we had the issue with the hard fork, I literally said, hey, Pavel, tell me who tell me who I can talk to. I need to tell them to halt the deposits. Literally within 20 minutes, we were on the line with CoinDeal and Instant Bittex with the relevant parties, and we halted the deposits and everything was good. And then the same thing to get it back online. So I'll introduce him tomorrow or something like that, or as soon as he's available. Um, and, and he'll tell you from his, his mouth himself that, listen, I've, I've already contacted since August these exchanges. I have all the processes that are, that are expected. And, uh, and, and that's that. So it still isn't online. I, I understood that they are. The messages that they sent is that they're online and they, they told the community that they're online. So we'll check that. But it doesn't matter. The point is that that we have an open communication with the people, so so that's that. Yeah, we we have the document, and it's easier to close the deals with the exchanges. Right. So the next one's about the old Omni token. Uh, besides burning those 30 percent so hang on migration yes yeah, so it's 30 percent migrated so far can the remaining what i call zombie safe x coins on the omni chain still be used after uh or traded after um the yes yeah yes yes they can be but that's that that's why this is amazing that's not up to us but they will be useless to to our safe x blockchain like if exchanges want to keep trading them, so we'll have to convert trade Satoshi over to the safe exchange, SafeX token. We'll have to politely request that they delist it uh, when the time comes, and we just make sure no one else lists it. So that's going back to like when people were saying, uh, you know, how come you didn't let Coin Deal list the safe exchange coin? Well, here's the perfect reason. You really want to have to have to do like 10,000 things every day forever, right? So this is one less thing to do. Trading the safe exchange coins is trade Satoshi and I'm sure we'll convert them over to, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll convert the, there, the safe exchange coin and only trade the safe X token, right? Richard, are you recording this? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, recording. You didn't forget to hit the record, right? <laughs> I'm just going to go check the computer. One second. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's fine. I think Henry's also doing the recording as well. Right. So next question. How long after Marketplace launch will uh, dividends be initiated? I don't want to talk about that right now. Right up. One sec, just uh, go through these. <laughs> All right, so the next one's about ace cards. So which aces have you dealt to us thus far, and how many other yeah. aces are you holding in your deck currently? Coin, coin deal was an ace. Fee Miner was an ace. Uh, those are the only two that I could remember right now. But they, they wind up not changing the game all, all that much, uh, admittedly. I was really counting on McAfee Miner to really change a lot, but... Uh, next one's money. Thought you've done that one. <clears throat> so, does the crash in Bitcoin's price and the distrust that it creates in general uh, for, the, for the general population bring us further away from mass adoption, or change anything in your plans? So, basically, market conditions. It, it, does that change anything? So, so easier. So. We need to do what we said we're going to do with this marketplace stuff and then get people to see the advantages of cryptocurrency. And 
the longer Bitcoin stays down and the faster we get this done, the much better for us it will be. To, I, I think that very clearly answers the question, but... Will there be a feature? I think this is actually a feature of the um, dual, dual key uh, blockchain um, that we've got. But will there be a feature in the wallet which allows selected third parties to view transactions but not the contents of the wallet itself? That already exists. Yeah, so if you give someone your private view oh, key... Oh, no, you can, you can disclose the transaction using your view key. You can give someone the contents of the transaction yeah. without disclosing the rest of the wallet. This one's probably not so related to SafeX, but still worth asking the question. So when do you expect the next market bull run in 2019 or 20? Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, I'm not promising anything, but I could say what I'm doing is, I mean, what I'm doing, what I believe for myself is uh, you got the having every four years. So you have the Bitcoin having is, is in 2020 in May. I can tell you what happened in 2016 because I was there. In 2016, on the halving, so for the halving, the price started going up. And then after the halving, it went up a lot. You know, it started to just pick up momentum. And it took a whole year. So if the if the market will start to uptick in May, maybe it'll start to uptick in or something like that between may and christmas time you know bitcoin not necessarily the whole market i'm talking bitcoin between may and christmas it will start going up just very weakly but it'll go up and then having so till may 2020 it'll be like just edging up it'll start to make like it'll double within the year and then 10x within within the next year that's pretty much how it's been going for the last eight years this phenomenon because what happens is a lot of people this having thing is like the olympics or it's like the world cup as they come check out what's going on with the cryptos what's the state of the market What's the state of the, the companies that are building stuff? What are all these different coins doing? How are they doing? It's like a massive Olympics. And that's exactly what I believe will happen again. There's the demand. Like a lot of people come in and just start, start playing the markets. So the point is, though, we started SafeX to do a very specific thing, is to let people buy and sell in a structured market for cryptocurrency anywhere in the world at any time very quickly and safely and securely. So that's freedom about bitcoins having you know a bull market in safex should look uh, a lot different because we have what's called the increasing so yeah we have, we have to still launch our stuff and and when we do it that's uh we'll have our own bull run we'll get rewarded for what we've done so good stuff man good stuff good to have that insight in your uh, in your thought process there. Yeah. So the next one's from um, Ollie. How many sellers do you have lined up already, and what transaction volume do you expect from these sellers in 2019? Yeah. Um. So I I can't say the number. Like it's a lot of different products, and that's what matters. But just for me personally, I'm expecting to do like 20 or 40 million dollars of volume by myself. I mean, not just by myself, through through my own channels, through my own ways. So, yeah, I'm I'm not very advanced yet in in that in that um, necessity. But when we're market ready, then then we will definitely go and and uh, and get a lot of people, people, you know, understanding how the market works and and getting them selling product product works for a credit card might not work for crypto but products that don't work so much for credit card might definitely work for crypto you know so we've yet to discover what is the perfect product and, and that's going to be a lot of fun i think a lot of people are excited about having or being able to buy gold i think that's one of the options as well 
Sure. Sure. We, we're selling gold and diamonds for SafeX Cash right now. All that bling. Right, next yeah. one from Nano Narkai Agent. Uh, is it possible or are any plans in the works to onboard video streaming and uploading capabilities to the SafeX blockchain like Twitch or YouTube, uh, i.e. SafeX Tube? Yeah, so basically, so, I think that's so, general content. So, so one, one of our developers, they, they, uh, they spent two years dealing with stuff in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in music and, and audio files and stuff like that. So we were thinking about making like a music player so you could sell audio. A private key unlocks the audio file. So when you buy it, it gets mangled up with your private key. So only your player can play it if your private key is embedded inside. So that's kind of really good for artists and stuff like that. So uh, let's just leave that there. Yeah, so an inter interesting potential for uh, delivering media. Yes. <clears throat> right, so the next one's from uh, Kapora. Uh, what's the status of the ATM? Yeah, ATMs are in advanced stage. So we're, we'll have a prototype done by the end of the month, uh, cabinet and all. We have a mass producer who has agreed to take on our project. So it's like as soon as we're happy with it and we kind of showed it around to the world for a couple of months, then we will mass produce, you know, 100 or so right away and get those installed all over the world. So there, yeah, the a lot a lot of time I'm using on the ATM to make sure that it's a good product and that that uh have something online that you want to buy and you want to get into the SafeX cash that you need to get that product that's online on the SafeX marketplace. So you get to, so we need to be able to run to the ATM, put in two hundred dollars, get home, and then buy that thing off of the SafeX market. You see what I mean? So that's exactly what I'm trying to. Uh, the kind of uh, environment I'm trying to set up for people to be able to buy stuff very easily and convert their cash for SafeX cash very easily likewise. I hope that's clear. And by making the ATMs ourselves, we get like a price drop of like two and a half X from the general market. You see? Yeah. Um, next question. So I'm going to reword this because we've already asked this question a few times. Uh, I know you're never going to mention specific exchange names, uh, but do you have any plans for exchanges with more volume within the US? Yeah, so like I said, um, so US exchanges, we got delisted from Bittrex. There's some processes that we're already undergoing in order to get back on Bittrex. Don't quote me on that because you're going to ruin our chances. Seriously, that's so annoying. But anyway, there's a lot of work to do, and that's kind of why like, I'm not talking about stuff, and you're going to sit there and wonder and wonder and wonder. But guess what? That's how it is, because loose lips sink ships. The more I talk, the more shit gets ruined. So um, we, we're going to get on US exchanges. We're going to do our best. Such a, such a legal minefield over in the US, but obviously it's a good potential for us. Uh, so yeah, I understand that sentiment. It's it's of course it's something you really want to kind of tell people about. It's something quite exciting, but at the same time, there's just processes in place. There's legal legalities that you need to get covered and and whatnot first uh, before we can even really take that further out. And as you said, loose lips sink ships and everything. So yeah, makes uh, makes makes sense how you're handling that. So the next question, uh, so how will the marketplace deal with any taxes and duties on items purchased through the marketplace? So basically, will there be a function to maybe have uh, a custom tax uh, on there as well, or you to be able to factor in tax or anything like that? Yes. Um, uh, answer is yes. The, there's, there's a solution that we have in mind, and it's go kind of thing. And last question from Joey Crypto. Uh, will the marketplace really have a CSV file importer for easy e-commerce marketplace to shift to commerce? So basically, is it going to be a way to bulk import product descriptions and stuff? That's so a good idea. That's a good idea. See, those are the kind of features that, that uh, you're going to tell to the developers when we're kind of done already. See, that's why I don't understand why people say final marketplace. What does it mean? final marketplace like hires develop they have a million people working there like when did they ever call it final of course. Start with the first 
right? The first, <laughs> the final marketplace. Yeah. Well, us ourselves as, as, as members of the community have a huge responsibility in giving this feedback to you, um, especially if we're merchants as well, people who are wanting to sell on the platform. We need to let you know and the developers know <clears throat> what will make that easy for you. Where are the road, where are the roadblocks, where, where are you going to find, um, I forgot what the word is, issues, uh, what makes it easier for you and all that kind of stuff. So good. <clears throat> Just one second, I just need to uh, clear my chest. Sorry if my voice is off a bit. I've uh, been dying of a cold for the last couple of days, so I'm, I'm on the tail end now, but uh, it's throwing my throat off. So that's all the questions off the forum anyway. Uh, I don't know if there's any other comments that you want to make before I move on to the uh, announcements, Dan. Uh, everything is awesome. <laughs> good stuff right so next is i know a lot of you have been asking about weekly updates uh, of course dan used to do a weekly video update um uh, quite a while back now and i know a lot of you are kind of itching to get a weekly update so we are going to start doing a regular weekly update or as regular as we can get it uh, on the forum so it'll be open to everyone um, and it will just cover different things sort of like what marketing initiative initiatives have happened uh, what developments have been done on the blockchain softwares all that kind of stuff anything that might not have been discussed publicly uh, on, on discord twitter or whatever i just want to mention something about that i mean sure we don't put up updates every week for the last like year but there's projects out there putting updates every week for five years and have nothing to show for it. So how valuable that is in the grand scheme of things. But now that we're getting to a place where uh, we can show what we update, that's why we're going to start doing uh, the weekly updates because it's becoming worthwhile. You see what I mean? Like, of course, yeah. And kind of like we, we hired a new team last year. We're getting familiar. We, we, stuff moving so fast i don't have time to just sit down and just start thinking about what i did this week like there I, I did a thousand things this week i don't know which which part to tell you you see like which part is relevant but now that things are getting quite relevant like with marketplace features the proofs of concept we have developers who we're comfortable talking with and stuff like that so it's much different environment today than it was a year ago so that's why I'm comfortable with starting up like these weekly updates and and Rich agreed to help me out with getting those structured and put together. Of course, yeah. And we've, we've, we've tweet every day, man. I'm, well. tweet, I'm tweeting every single day. Come on. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and we've got a nice little process in, in in place now. So that we don't we don't often we're not often sort of got free time at the same time to be able to sit and talk about what's gone on during the week but there is a platform that we can use where we can just throw little nuggets of information and develop on that as we go on throughout the week so hopefully yeah, yeah uh, and, and, and 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 uh we will definitely be saying you know demanding feedback you know and we're expecting participation of course yeah and that's not to say that there won't be video updates in the future of course i'm sure you'll do ones for for major milestones i could imagine one for when the actual marketplace is released for example uh so that's i don't think that's ever going to be a a, a no-go anymore it's just obviously for the more regular smaller updates it will be handled on the forums now So the next thing as well, um, it's just an idea that uh, we've been toying around with, is we're going to be we're going to try and do a group chat, a bi-weekly group chat, and that's basically Dan, myself, and maybe some of the developers or whoever within within the company uh, getting on a, a live call together and just talking about the topics of the week or or whatever um, is called. We don't really have a structure for that yet, but that's something that we're planning to do maybe on a bi-weekly case. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, we're also trying different ways that we can interact with the community in a live way. 
Uh, we're going to do uh, a follow-up, uh, Ask Me Anything, an AMA on Reddit as well. So for anyone who's on Reddit, you can do a, <laughs> a live uh, AMA with Dan as well. Uh, we haven't got a date for that yet, but we'll do something in the future soon uh, with that. So keep yeah, it there, for that. Yeah, just to interject, the reason for that was because we um, – um, how to say – on the forum, there were a lot of questions, and I wanted to just jump in there and answer them. It's not really possible because, um, um, how to say, but on Reddit, you could just jump in on any comment and give your answer. So, you know, in about a month from now, we should launch something like that. Good stuff. Right. Okay. So that's it for the questions. Uh, apologies if I have missed anything. There was a few questions that I've skipped over because they were very uh, similar to what's already been discussed anyway. So, uh, But now's the opportunity to ask any questions you want. Uh, Dan, do you want me to just open up the vocal audio or shall we keep it to the uh, text chat? How, how do you want to handle it? I think, I think text is much, much, much more reliable. Great, yeah. Mainly because Henry's online as well, so, you know. A lot of reasons. <laughs> right. So, yeah, it's open to you a lot now. So, ask your questions and uh, feel, feel, don't away. think, use your instincts. Feel, don't think, use your instincts. And questions are more than welcome. Actually, actually, I changed my mind about when questions. They're my favorite questions now. ERC twenty wrapper? No, we 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 aren't we aren't putting resource towards the ERC twenty wrapper at this time. It's not necessary. Yeah. That was kind of like fake news out there saying that on our side we legitimately wanted to make an ERC twenty wrapper, but the hype about needing one was exaggerated by the media. So we kind of like put that on the shelf even though we've researched it. Yeah, success for SafeX is that we have a marketplace that is easy to use. It can't be interfered with by, you know, uh, attackers and, and hackers and stuff. And people can very simply use it to list products. And people from anywhere in the world reliably can buy those products from those people. You have a reputation system that gets rid of bad actors and rewards good actors with more business. So it pays to be a good player. Some really nice merchandising value traded on SafeX, and there's a lot of nice things, a lot of culture being shared on 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 the network, and and that's that's really what it's all about is is bringing us all closer together. The biggest challenge in the marketplace is those small nuances, like because you can just code any kind of marketplace, but one that will, like I mentioned earlier, get rid of bad actors and kind of like grieving. Imagine you buy something and it was perfect but you're just a jerk and you just leave some bad feedback. And how do we combat that? It's those kind of stuff. That's literally the biggest challenge. And, and I believe that we have the best advice coming our way in order to answer that. Yeah, life, life has never been better. Life is amazing. Um, yeah, I wake up every morning with a yoga class and, and I'm like ecstatic. I love being alive. I love waking up. I love my job. I love everything that I do. I love the community that I can talk to you guys. And, and uh, it's like a very colorful group of people with a lot of different perspectives and things like that. Sure, of course, some things just, but I learned to just cope with that and, and uh, not take it too personally. And, and uh, things, things are fantastic. I was so happy to visit the US and, and see how calm, how far I've, I've gone since you know, five years ago when I buy my first Bitcoins and seeing how this whole industry has developed and seeing that I have 20 plus people on a daily basis interacting with me and and we have a mutual respect and everybody does their part and things are getting done. It's amazing. It's an amazing machine. I'm so happy to be doing this as soon as possible. First title markets. Probably by the summer, we'll have some real trading going on. Um, I'm hoping sooner 
but you know i'm i'm this like overly optimistic guy if you could tell by now but um eventually everything comes around so that's the most important thing and the satellites will need those so that we're you know we could have this seal of approval that we're totally unstoppable so like consider like how they have those bitcoin um satellites from blockstream or whatever it'd be really great to have some safex satellites and it's something i've been researching and when i was in san francisco i kind of linked up with an old friend who was launching some camera into the space that lets you stream vr in real time and stuff like that so that's what got me to going because i know somebody who's like deeply researched into satellite launches so hopefully we'll get something like that within the next couple of years yeah my account didn't get hacked i was just kidding uh what kind of escrow so that's cool thing so you um we have the concept of registering to be an escrow and somebody who sells something can require the buyer to submit to the escrow service that they chose. So that's something. Just got my account back. Do I want a painting framed? Uh, if you have a good frame, that'd be cool. Uh, if you want, consider it part of the consider it part of the artistic expression. Otherwise, we'll pick a frame. If you have a good frame in mind, you know that'd be great if you could frame it. Uh, yeah, we have we have literally 20 people I see every single day in the office. We have four low level, you know, in the engine room. Low level means in the engine room for programmer speak. It doesn't mean that they're bad down in the engine room. So we have four developers directly working on the coin play stuff. When one trillion ASAP, please. Yes. What the SafeX USP is. What's the SafeX competitive? Why it can't be copied? I mean, we have a currency. We have a we have a currency that because who the hell wants to be out of pocket like I am and and build something because they believe in it not many most people just want to get paid up front and that's why they will fail in the long run what's up Benny and Berlin? how you doing so to speak Hugo mining farm yes there will be some manual labor statewide so definitely um, yeah definitely something to keep in mind um, yeah, those are things, uh, logistics. So we need to create a, a layer, allow logistics companies to uh, act on that. And similar to like escrow, if you wanted to have a mandatory escrow. Yeah, someone else will do the manual labor, no worries. Why is US? Yeah, because in Serbia, you have to pay import duties. You have to pay tax and import. And nobody is shipping huge volumes of hardware to Serbia. You have 350 million people living in the USA, and uh, it's the number one market. There's like, dude, it's dude. Just just Google the prices. I mean, look at the prices of of hardware in Serbia, in Serbia, and then hardware in USA, and just look at the retail. They're like worlds apart. I didn't know that completely. I first started buying stuff. That's when I learned the hard lesson it's so much it's it's just as it's easier to replicate in us it's even easier to replicate this in the usa any other questions yeah safex branch offices so we have a uh, portugal coming up we have um and uh we'll, we'll see what to do about the us you see so open mind and and uh let things let things flow because it's 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 not on me. I mean, it's not up to me. This is like, you know, there's a big world out there and there's a lot of different perspectives and there's a lot of people who are who are um attack that would it would have to wipe out the hard drives. So good point because everything's going towards solid state drives and those are more susceptible to EMP attacks than than um spinning disk drives some, you know, uh pretty interesting dilemma because i'm trying to count on everything going into solid state drives they are impacted by emp attacks but there's also emp shielding you know yeah but your crypto would be fine just you know eventually people would have to turn their computers back on and hopefully that their hard drives are intact and they still have all of the the uh yeah, you know, the blockchain still was stored on there. So yeah, we're testing. We're testing immensely. So 
with addition of two new uh, developers, uh, one of those developers we've we've already conquered a lot of stuff as consultants together, and uh, we've done a really really good job very quickly, very high quality. So it's something that I'm not so worried about. In ter I mean, it's something I worry about and we concern ourselves with. But testing is massive. That's why we're doing our proof of concept phase before going into the live push of the marketplace platform. So it's like you could expect to start testing these things out on the test net before things go live. You see? Because once it gets released and it gets high and crashes all the servers, we don't want to be there. We want to be safe and sound. We want everything safe X. So that's the point. And and we're gonna do that. And and we're paying really good attention. I'm making sure everybody gets good sleep, everybody's healthy. Everybody has a good vacation times here and in there. Like these are all important things to happy people, building beautiful things for all of us to use all over the world. So just like we're doing it. Yeah, just uh you know, if you have time and you're using the 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 wallet for example, you can make a tutorial for the wallet. That's a way community members can be involved. If there's people out there who you know who are investing in crypto coins, you know, you could ask them questions why they invested in certain different kind of coins. You could share that feedback with us. You can write me an email. Here's my email, daniel at safex.io. And, um, you know, you could tell me things that you've seen in the wild. I love getting feedback. There's nothing more that I love than getting feedback, honestly. Even if, even when it's like awful feedback and I'm angry, the next day I'm like, damn, that was like, that was a good feedback, and I'm taking those things into consideration. So um, don't ever fret. And I can't stress how important it is to produce content about what we're doing. So, you know, seriously, upvoting things on Reddit, uh, posting our links to other forums, other Reddits in the world. The more we link together, the more other networks we tap into. We'll be updating our website so that because right now, last year, we threw up a website, but we were busy building other stuff. I didn't pay attention to the website. So that'll be updated in this month. Uh, there's, so, so when that's updated, there'll be more clear information for, for people to share with. Soon enough, we'll have a white paper out on the marketplace. Soon enough, we'll have proof of concepts out on the testnet. These are things people should be getting excited about. But right now, we're not very much out there because we've been under the hood. We've been just building and building and building. At least I have been. So community could be helping by constantly, not just kind of echoing to each other, but letting people know that, making them aware that this exists, that SafeX exists, you see? Because we are a huge community, but we're not very vocal outside of our own neighborhood, so to speak. So the more you can start to mention that the SafeX marketplace will take care of that, the SafeX marketplace does that. Because there aren't that many marketplaces on crypto, and there aren't many marketplaces that are taking a very sincere approach to it. So the more you link others to our community, the more that will build on itself. And the sooner you start doing that, the more sooner it'll have an impact. And then when we launch, it'll be that much better for all of us, how colorful this culture would explode and how many people and things that they would offer. And our currency is fairly distributed. So it's not like, so not telling people about SafeX and that it's mining right now is a disadvantage to everybody in the world who doesn't hear about it because we've launched something in such an equitable way, it's not even funny. Please just let the people know out there. Write tutorials. Uh, give me feedback. Tell me stuff, what's going on. Have the green light. I mean, this is, this is an awesome project. You see, uh, you could talk about it when Marketplace is released, but guess what? There, there are projects out there that are talking about themselves for five years and released absolutely nothing. We're on the brink of doing it. I mean, we've advanced with like no – it's like if you guys ever seen that, that why thing. It's like you have um, – why did the Wright brothers finish their – fly the plane when no one else did? And, and the Wright brothers were bicycle shop. We're the damn bicycle shop that's, made, that's making it. So because I want this so bad, I packed every single dime I've ever made into this, right back into it. I think nothing of myself. I stay up late. I do everything I need to make this thing happen. 
I go to sleep when I have to so that I can be up late, so that I can keep making this happen. Every dime I've earned, I pack it right back into this stuff. Sure, I got some few expensive things, but guess what? I, I live rent free sometimes because, you know, so I save here and there. It doesn't matter. Like everything that I'm doing is to make it much more palatable to get this stuff out there so that the marketplace will be usable by people. Yeah, the update to the blue paper will be the, um, will be the white paper about the marketplace, which is like we had one in, 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 in the summer. We've had one in December and we'll have another one as soon as possible. No, 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 not going to. Everyone should, the ace card is SafeX. Cash is cheap, I don't know. Yeah, but the more you keep it, so opportunities get better over time until they're gone, Juice. So the more you keep it, and then it's gone. So you, you can't do that forever. Thanks, Clinton, 13. It's going to blow up anyway, but I mean, it's, it's going to blow up because people are talking about it.